thanks for coming to this talk. Um, this is Next Generation in Angular Applications with Vite and Analog. And this is uh, something that I've really been uh, passionate about and happy to show with you or share with you today. Yep, so there's my face. Uh, once again, I'm Brandon Roberts. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Brandon T. Roberts. I tweet out GIFs. I talk about sports. I block people sometimes on Twitter because that's just what you have to do. Uh, but I have some fun there. So if you're on Twitter, uh, you can find me there. Or on LinkedIn, you can find me there too. Uh, probably under that, under that same handle. Uh, I am a maintainer on the NGRX project. If you're, I'll kind of talk about NGRX a little bit later, but NGRX is an a open source project that builds, help you build reactive applications in Angular. Um, also a Google developer expert, which just means I've been around the community for a while, been able to do some uh, cool things there, and just been recognized for that. So uh, join the Angular, Angular community. They have other uh, things that you could be a GDE for, but uh, mine is Angular. So uh, Also a software engineer at OpenSauce. And if you caught the keynote uh, by Brian Douglas earlier, uh, we're all about open source insights. And we love doing open source and helping uh, uh, finding more value in those insights and open source projects. So for the uh, agenda for this talk, uh, I'm going to talk about Veet, kind of the project, uh, dive a little bit into that because uh, it's more it's kind of the backbone of, of this project. Um, Talk about meta frameworks in general. There are other ones out there, of course, that exist in the web ecosystem today. And I'll talk about um, Angular, of course, because uh, this is kind of building a meta framework around Angular and the analog project itself. Uh, so first, I'll talk about the uh, Vite project itself, because Vite has been around for a while now, and um, I was kind of inspired by this project to uh, work on analog. So, getting to some of that uh, for Vite itself, talk about some of the backstory around Vite, uh, the features it has, uh, features that Vite has today that it provides to the uh, ecosystem, and sort of the impact of uh, of that, uh, the impact that it has had. So the, for the backstory, um, talk about the creator, uh, Veet, and kind of his background in, that kind of goes back to the background in Angular also, and some of the uh, problems that he set out to solve uh, with this project. So you've, uh, if you're not familiar, Evan Yu is the creator of uh, Creative Vue.js, uh, but maybe a, a uh, lesser known fact, uh, they created Vue.js. He was also involved in the uh, Angular JS ecosystem at one point. If you're familiar with the difference between now between Angular JS and Angular. Um, but this is why some of the parts of Vue.js look a lot similar to uh, Angular JS did back in the day, even some parts of Angular. And then, of course, he went on to create Vite in a uh, a lot of people have <laughs> discussed about whether it's Vite or Vite. I've heard it both ways, uh, but the, the, the site says Vite, uh, like uh, feet. So we're going to go with that. So some of the um, Vite, he, like I said, created Vite to solve a specific set of problems. And some of those problems were, of course, all these problems were focused on uh, helping front-end developers or helping front-end development, the front-end development process. And some of those problems were uh, so, server, so low server starts, that's a mouthful, uh, in development. And this is just the initial time it takes up to uh, spin up your application. These things, you know, especially if you have a larger app, these things can take time and kind of drag down your developer experience. And uh, one of the biggest differences here was using uh, bundle-based development. And V kind of mitigates this problem by using uh, browser-based APIs where it dynamically loads these files. So uh, 
I want to move away from bundle-based development and move more towards uh, the single or uh, incremental or single file approach. This is where uh, ES modules in the web ecosystem became a lot more important um, because you can now load these files just dynamically in the browser uh, with built-in APIs. We don't necessarily have to build a, a lot of custom tooling around uh, build a lot of custom tooling around that. But overall, just wants to improve the developer experience for building uh, front-end applications. Avita has gone on to be extended to build back-end applications and even further than that, but um, that was the overall goal. We wanted to, there are tools out there today, of course, as the web has continued to evolve to help uh, build front-end uh, applications. So some of the features of uh, Vite is uh, instant server start. As I mentioned before, uh, the quicker, of course, when you start up your front-end app, the quicker you get started, the quicker you can start developing features or things like that and not have that bottleneck there. Also has uh, HMR, which is hot module replacement, where you can make changes to your, your projects um, and you're not having to like rebuild the entire app. It can pinpoint which particular individual files need to be recompiled and serve them uh, dynamically uh, at development time. Uh, the other thing is the developer, more developer experience out of the box. Like I said, if your uh, application starts up faster and you can see changes faster uh, during the development process, then of course that helps you, uh, that developers, helps developers when they're using these tools uh, in that way. Also, faster builds. Uh, it uses some tools under the, under the hood like ES Build, which are more modern uh, tools for uh, compiling like TypeScript and uh, compiling your code. So being able to do that faster is always a plus. And extensibility with plugins where you can build on top of this uh, ecosystem and build additional integrations on top of it which is what we're doing uh, here. And the TypeScript support out of the box. Of course, this is more, has become a lot more important these days with uh, TypeScript kind of eating up more of the, the web development uh, ecosystem and just having out of the box uh, support for that is always a plus. We consider, we consider that to be table stakes. So naturally, like everyone in the Angular ecosystem, including myself, you know, we want this in some form or, or another, right? Um, and even the other, the other ecosystems, which I'll kind of get into uh, further, uh, wanted to get in on, on this, this tool that was like growing in popularity. So for impact, uh, mainly first man talking about the impact on the web ecosystem uh, that V had as it's been developed over these uh, years or over, over its lifetime so far. Uh, but before we get into Vite, uh, there were, of course, there were bundlers before Vite. There will be bundlers after. Uh, but there, the most prominent one is uh, Webpack. And of course, like I said, Webpack uh, is a bundler itself. And Angular uses this, uh, in general, uses this bundler under the hood today. Uh, it has things like loaders and plugins that allow you to extend the Webpack ecosystem also. Uh, extend the functionality of Webpack and help you there. And other features such as uh, module federation, which has grown in popularity. And this module federation is a more of a larger project that helps you scale up, uh, split up larger apps in that way. As I mentioned before, this is um, relative, very, very new, I would say. Uh, but as I mentioned before, there will thing, be things after, uh, before V, there will be things after. Uh, do do want to mention this one, which is TurboPack, which is a bundler also. It's just the successor to Webpack, which I said just as recently uh, come out. But it's in alpha status today, um, and it's still being developed actively, so it doesn't have all the things that uh, 
um, even Veep or Webpack has today. And it is going to have plugin support soon, but I did want to mention that uh, just because, like I said, the web ecosystem is always moving forward and Veep is part of helping move that forward. And this is another one of those tools along those lines. And as I mentioned before, uh, success to the Webpack. So looking at the web landscape uh, today, there's definitely been um, a mass shift uh, in projects to uh, adopt Vite. Uh, projects like Astro, which I'll talk about a little bit later, uh, even React, uh, just because of the, some, the presets and templates you can use with uh, Vite that give you that support out of the box. Uh, SolidJS is another one. Uh, if you've been in the uh, Vue ecosystem, there's Nuxt, uh, which is doing, like I said, a nice balance of using uh, or providing an option of using Webpack and V, but uh, ultimately, yeah, I think it's pushing more people towards V. Of course, Vue ecosystem was probably the, one of the first uh, ecosystems to, to take advantage of this just because of the, some of the integrations there, but Anybody, like I said, anybody can build integrations there. Uh, there's also uh, Svelte uh, and Svelte Kit, which is a meta framework for uh, Svelte apps. Uh, Quick is another project which you may have uh, been to Mishko's talk earlier. We talked about Quick. And uh, even projects like Playwright, uh, which is a testing, uh, testing framework, and Vtest. And which is another framework on top of V. And there are more projects. Uh, this is not the, of course, not all the projects that are on V. But if we look at, like I said, look at the landscape of uh, the web and what the two more modern, uh, what the web technologies are using, uh, we can see this, like I said, this movement in that direction. The next. Uh, I want to talk about uh, meta frameworks. So I'll provide the definition of what a framework, meta framework is, talk about some of the features, uh, some of the common features that you get when, with uh, meta frameworks. So a meta framework, uh, when I got this definition from a blog post, a meta framework is a system one level above that stitches multiple frameworks together. I have a link to this uh, blog post from uh, ben, ben Holmes, who wrote this on the uh, Prismic blog. Uh, so you can definitely check that out um, after, of course, after this talk or later on. So Angular itself uh, is a Angular itself is a is a framework with its own core. The core pieces of Angular applications, general are components, pipes, directives, and services. These are the main building blocks that you would use with, um, if you're building an, like, an Angular application itself. Um, for other parts of the framework, there's also routing for navigating between pages. There's HTTP client. If you're using more native browser tools, you're using something like Fetch. It has its own HTTP client that kind of integrates in with the framework. Now there's also forms, uh, of course, for managing data input. SSR, which we'll also talk about further uh, for server-side rendering. And the, even more than that, just because Angular, Angular itself has a lot of uh, parts. I wanted to mention some of the other uh, players in the Meta Framework space, uh, just because of mo I'll say most of the web technologies these days have a Meta Framework along with them, or they our meta framework in themselves. The most common one in the React ecosystem is, is uh, Next.js, um, which is a meta framework around uh, React. And some of these will, like I said, be analogous with the, the ones that I mentioned uh, earlier as far as the web technologies themselves. There's also uh, Svelkit, uh, Remix, who um, has been making some waves recently? If you if you follow that that ecosystem, uh, also Astro, uh, which is another can be considered to be a meta framework, just because you can bring your own 
uh, your own primer with you to use with Astro. Also, Nux, as I mentioned, the Solid Start is the meta framework for Solid JS, and Quick City is another one to list there. So the list is, and this is not even the list of all of them, but uh, most of the ones that I kind of talked about earlier. So meta framework features would there's a few common things that these meta frameworks have uh, in common, and uh, we'll talk, talk about some of those features, uh, such as file-based routing. Um, I'll kind of get into a little more depth on these. Uh, Server-side server, server -side rendering is another common feature. Uh, even static site generation uh, is another one that I'll get into. Uh, and API routes. So for file-based routing, for those that are familiar with uh, Angular, Today, you have to, if you're building an Angular application and you want to configure routing, you have to wire, do the wiring up for you, uh, do the wiring for this configuration mainly. If you're dynamically in, uh, importing components uh, or setting up, you know, nested routing or anything, you have to set that up using configuration itself, and that just be an array of routes there. Uh, File-based routing uh, takes this a step further to where you can define a set of routes uh, based on the file system structure, whether it be folders and files, or the, uh, like we mentioned here, we have a routes folder uh, that defines index routes or routes for products and with IDs. So it just gives you the same result, but with less manual configuration that you have to do. Now there's also server-side rendering. Uh, so this is where you're, you could have a a single page app where it's rendered on the server, uh, the HTML is then shipped to the client, um, as shipped to the client already as if that page is already there, and then uh, after the application is uh, sent to the user, the application is hydrated on the client. So this is, uh, and then there's that time that you have to, or that time between you know the static page and then the kind of the JavaScript single page app taking over. Uh, the most common one in this space is Angular Universal, where you can add, and this is kind of where Angular Universal is today. It's kind of an add-on to an existing uh, Angular application that you can use to uh, serve up, uh, serve, use server-side rendering. And also it does some other things like pre-rendering also. Uh, so also for static site generation, uh, these are more for, more for content-focused websites. Uh, such as landing pages, uh, marketing sites, uh, where they're just building something for maybe you have a product or something like that. Um, most common one is blogs, where you don't necessarily need a lot of interactivity. Uh, and in, today in the Angular ecosystem, there's Scully uh, that does this for uh, static site generation, where you can build an Angular application and uh, generate the, the static parts from that and serve that as opposed to the Angular app itself. There's also the uh, islands architecture, uh, which just uses uh, partial hydration uh, to build uh, these websites. And an alternative to kind of shipping a single uh, bundle in that for that application and helping kind of break up your app into a lot smaller pieces these different parts of the application are loaded in isolation. And I kind of show a little bit about that, but uh, the way you can only kind of only ship the, the JavaScript that you need uh, with this architecture. So looking at an example page, I have some distinct areas here. I have a header that can be loaded independently on its own island. I have a navigation bar that that has a side that has menu, has its own pieces, and the main content area. All these things can be loaded on their own island and be independent of each other. They don't have any overlap. Uh, so this is, like I said, another part that uh, some meta frameworks provide is islands architecture that's becoming more popular. For API routes, these are uh, API, you build these APIs without external libraries. Uh, 
Uh, if you build your own ones like um, Nest.js or using these ones that are integrated in with Next or these other meta frameworks, uh, these allow you to do that, have more direct connection to, with these APIs. Now, these are also convention-based uh, to where you can define these uh, API routes within these predefined folders uh, in your application that the meta framework provides, where they be inlined in the route component. As I mentioned before, Remix is a project that does this uh, with something called actions and loaders. And Next.js also does this uh, with functions called get static props, um, which, of course, would, I'll just throw it in there, the latest version of Next.js kind of moves away from this, but uh, this is still something that was, or something that's available today. So Angular has always been traditionally uh, kind of off doing our own thing, right? These other ecosystems are moving along, are like I said, moving to these different tools, to kind of taking advantage of this. We kind of want to end on the, end on the fun of that. We're kind of going back to the landscape of the web as where we are today. Uh, like I said, we want Angular to be able to take advantage of the web and everything it has to offer. We want to kind of slot uh, Angular in here also. So next, I want to uh, cover or talk about Angular itself and kind of how it has um, moved and evolved kind of over, the, over its lifetime and where it is today. I'm kind of talk about some of the evolution of things that have happened in Angular, and this will be a fully uh, exhaustive list, but and also talk about some of the uh, future parts of Angular and even some of those things that kind of led into uh, what, we're, what we're doing with analog. So going back to Angular features, you mentioned that the core features of Angular, uh, we have the core where components, uh, pipes, directives, and services. Uh, we have our uh, routing, HTTP client, forms, uh, SSR, and more. So in our, if you've been building with Angular, Angular for a while already, you know we have the concept of uh, ng modules. And this is something that was introduced like very, well, kind of early and late in uh, Angular's lifetime as it was going into uh, betas and RCs uh, back then. But it's also moved to a place where we're, uh, we'll talk about kind of like standalone components and how that kind of impacts there. So an Angular component, of course, can have a lot of pieces in it itself, but it wasn't a single individual unit uh, before that you could build something with. You always had to have, for each Angular component, that uh, component had to live in an ng module somewhere that it could be kind of exposed to the the broader uh, application or the template of another component, depending on how you used it. And kind of in a, in a world where other, uh, other ecosystems are just using components as kind of this main building block, uh, these uh, components feel a little heavier, heavier in that way. But Angular has moved along to uh, standalone components to where you can Build some of these, uh, build these components without having the additional dependencies on uh, ng modules. So, for some examples with the directives, uh, we used, we would have to do things like import common module, which will bring in all these uh, things that you can use uh, with Angular. It will introduce standalone APIs for some of these things, or you can use. G4 or NGIF or async pipe and bring in only the parts you need uh, there. That one is extra. Uh, also, HTTP client. We have these HTTP client modules, but we're introducing these uh, standalone APIs uh, such as provide HTTP, uh, where uh, it's a lot more light, lightweight, lot, feels a lot more more lightweight, a lot, uh, lot more compact. And with routing, they're also introducing these things, some of the things in Angular that are across the board, uh, where we would have like router module dot for root, 
Uh, we have standalone uh, APIs for that, uh, such as provide router, and also being able to have uh, tree shakeable uh, features uh, with the, the router itself. So if you want to provide the router and uh, provide preloading with the router itself, uh, you can do that uh, also. Uh, also with forms, as I mentioned before, we used to have ng modules. We'll, we'll have standalone APIs for uh, these, those particular pieces. We'll also have typed, uh, I've also introduced type forms. So a lot of these things have helped Angular to evolve to kind of slim down the number of things that you have to um, kind of take in when you're building apps with Angular. And this is also extended to the, the ecosystem. As I mentioned before, uh, NGRX is a set of libraries for building reactive Angular applications. And we've also been able to evolve with the, the framework and take advantage of some of these uh, standalone APIs, uh, including provide store, provide state, um, effects, and router store, and more. So those are some of the things that Angular has evolved in, or Angular has evolved in today. But of course, there's also more things that Angular is doing and more things that we would like to see uh, in the future. Some of these things are being uh, kind of thought about you know, currently, uh, including state management, of course, NGRX is a library that helps you with state management, uh, or set of libraries that help you with state management. Things like runtime performance, uh, module federation, which I talked about of helping you kind of build larger applications with Angular um, at larger scales. Uh, more standalone APIs, because still kind of working out some of those uh, parts there. Uh, if you've seen some of the new image directives, image directive features, all these things are helping Angular and Angular developers to uh, push forward with building uh, Angular applications. Uh, there are also uh, directive composition uh, to where it uh, lets you kind of, uh, add more directives to components uh, and directives in a more seamless way. So this brings us to meta framework, meta framework or meta frameworks. Uh, that can help push the, the kind of the boundaries of Angular going forward. This is where the analog project um, comes in. As I mentioned before, uh, Meta Framework is for building on top of a framework, kind of putting those things together. Um, analog is a Meta Framework for building websites and applications using Angular. And then, of course, you, if you have a, a thing, you have to have a logo. We've seen other meta frameworks with uh, triangles, so we're kind of keeping on trend, on trend there. So, I know what you're thinking. Like, why? Why are you doing this? <laughs> why, why, build, why build a meta framework in the first place? Um, and I've had this idea for a while, but of course, ideas are, are great, but like putting those ideas into place takes time. And some of those things uh, were, some of those things needed to happen before analog it could even become a thing. Uh, one of those things was standalone components. Uh, as I mentioned before, being able to, uh, being able to use Angular with components meant you had to use the modules that go along with them. Now that ob uh, NG modules are considered optional. It has opened up a lot more possibilities there. There's also been some uh, advancements with using modern or modern build tools. The Angular team is experimenting with an ES build based uh, browser builder uh, for Angular applications. I mentioned before about um, ES modules, and this has had has had its own set of pain in the web ecosystem and. Angular is moving off, um, has moved along with that also, but it has uh, also helped with bringing tools like, uh, bringing this to tools like Vite. So let's talk about the, how Angular compilation works today. Uh, the Angular compiler 
uh, wraps the TypeScript compiler to provide Angular-specific uh, metadata. Uh, so it takes, and this happens like at a, at a global, uh, global level. So it has knowledge of all the files in your project. So then takes these files and produces an output of there, using, a, like I said, more of a, a bundle-based approach uh, in that way. So Vite works a little different, works a bit differently. Uh, Vite uses a single file compilation. So it can process these uh, files in parallel, you know, producing that multiple, producing multiple output a lot faster. Uh, and compile those files and like I said, sending them back to you, giving that feedback a lot quicker that uh, speeds up your development in that way, speeds up the feedback cycle. So how do we kind of bring these two things together? Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Vite has an ecosystem of plugins uh, that is built on top of the uh, rollup itself. So it gives you an API to use, a standard API to use to uh, hook into this. And also these transform hooks that you can use to transform files. So um, gives you some, like I said, tools out of the box to work with that. So if we look at the Angular compilation, the potential for, for this and the, the Angular team itself, itself, themselves are looking at this uh, to where we still have the Angular compilation and uh, use a Vite and still able to process multiple files and produce this uh, output as far as, at least at the, the plugin level to support Angular in that way. So some of the uh, features, of course, they were targeting with analog, uh, first powered by Vite. Um, so we get, like I said, get a lot of those uh, features that I mentioned before, uh, fast development, to take advantage of this plugin ecosystem and also tap into the wider web ecosystem because uh, Vite isn't tied to any particular uh, web framework and that, I definitely consider that a bonus in that way because it allows you to target these different systems. Another tool that I mentioned before is uh, Vitest. Uh, it's V powered. If you've used uh, tools like Jest before, uh, it's compatible. It has an API uh, compatible with that. Uh, it has smart watch mode to where you're not having to run all your tests every time you make a change. It knows which test to target and gives you more, um, better developer experience there. And it also has ESM and TypeScript support out of the box. One uh, project that, that I've uh, been working on with Analog also is Astro. And Astro is for uh, building content-focused sites, building content-focused sites. Uh, also ships zero JavaScript by default, so if you're Want to build a website, a landing page, components, things like that. Uh, you can definitely take advantage of Astro uh, in that way. And of course, this enables us to use uh, these Angular components uh, in these Astro projects um, because the, the thing that kind of tied the thing that ties them two together is uh, V in that way. As I mentioned before, some of the features that uh, Analog has is uh, like I said, using Vita under the hood, file system based routing to where it looks like you can define routes with uh, folders and files instead of having to do that manually. Uh, unit testing with Vitest, and also having other integrations there uh, with other tools that are coming along the way. One that I didn't mention uh, was Storybook, uh, which also has full support for Vita now, so you can take advantage of that also. Playwright has this for component testing. There are other tools uh, along the way that I'm sure will adopt this because it seems to be the de facto tool um, at this point. Uh, future features that are coming with analog uh, server-side rendering, like I said, if you, uh, and this kind of goes into the evolution of Angular also, uh, being able to 
better handle server-side rendering, uh, static site generation, uh, building static sites. Like I said, whether you use at, integrate Angular in with Astro to build a static site or have that be just part of the development uh, flow. Server and API routes, where you can define these um, routes that can talk to your database or using something like Firebase or even uh, functions that are provided by your hosting, you can use those. And uh, integrations with other, other integrations that come along, like I said, have, have kind of been unlocked by uh, V here. So we're going to, we've got enough time left, we're going to do a quick uh, demo to at least show something here. Um, so, this is just a, a project that I've uh, created. I didn't want, of course, go through the uh, all of trying to download, uh, do the whole demo downloading live on the internet thing, so we save some time there. Uh, but this is an uh, Angular project that's running uh, Vite and Analog. Browser. And um, like I said, yeah, we're running, like I said, running V, running file, using file-based routing and taking advantage of the Angular uh, ecosystem itself. So uh, I just have, like I said, a sample application here. It's V and Angular. Update this for, of course, with all things open. We'll keep the demo light. Um, and we get the nice benefit of, like I said, hot module reloading. Um, I'll show the, some of the file-based routing here, where we're, we're defining these routes within the, within the framework where I didn't have to define a manual config uh, for this home page component, a little bigger, and uh, still able to find, use all the things that you would use with Angular itself, such as nested routing. You can configure this with file-based routing. And uh, we have nested routes, uh, we have extra metadata that you can define with the route itself and uh, still like I said, be able to use these things with Angular and these components themselves. And also, uh, I'll also share a link with the slides of a project for uh, using with Astro. Um, but like I said, these are things that this meta framework around Angular, like I said, extends it further because I think it's something that the ecosystem needs uh, to move forward, like I said, with the evolution of the web and where we are with these other tools and uh, frameworks there. And also share a link to the, the repo there after this talk. So lastly, of course, with any open source project, um, you can definitely get involved uh, with the project for contributing, uh, whether this be through GitHub issues. Like I said, the project is still relatively uh, relatively new, even though we're building on some of its, these established systems. So filing issues on GitHub. Uh, of course, documentation is always a nice thing to have uh, when you're working on these projects So to help uh, future users. Uh, pull requests are always welcome. This is all open source. You can definitely dig into the code. Got to make things better. Uh, and also, if you want to sponsor the people working on the project, also, those are always appreciated there. This is just a, just a like I said, a relatively new project. Uh, some of the people here have already contributed to this project, so we're definitely looking forward to having more uh, involvement there as the project goes forward. Uh, you can check out the GitHub repo at this URL. Um, 
can also check out the docs at analogjs.org uh, to see how, like I said, how you can get involved with the project and help keep, help keep moving it along. Or even if you just want to try out the project, I didn't link it in the, in the slide, but you can go to analogjs.org slash new. And that will give you a new project on Stack Blitz that you can try without having to uh, download it to your machine or anything else. So definitely check that out. Uh, so to uh, recap, talked about Vite and kind of the, how it has made its way through the web ecosystem. Talked about meta frameworks. Uh, talked about Angular, has, how it has evolved over the, over the time, over its lifetime, and some of the new features and kind of where it's going. And also talked about analog and how we're building on top of these things, uh, these ecosystems to keep pushing uh, this forward. Um, thanks. <laughs>